All right, welcome to our video today on Wednesday, August the 19th. I hope you are having a great week and uh, I appreciate you tuning in for our videos. I'm going to go ahead and tell you folks that today I believe is going to be the best um, uh, video uh, of the entire second round. And I say that only because of the two people that we're going to have in our video today. Uh, these two men are worthy to be in the championship. Uh, I'm so serious. Um, it's almost unfortunate that they have to meet each other in the second round because they both deserve to go much further than this. But as you can see today, we're looking at Joseph from the book of Genesis. Um, and uh, he is number 10 ranked in the tournament. And we will look second of all at the prophet Daniel. He is ranked number seven in the tournament. Now, just to update you on our last couple of videos, um, let's see. Okay, so Monday's video, the voting has officially ended, and Boaz come out with a huge victory over the prophet Elijah. And yesterday's video, will the voting will continue through tomorrow, but as of right now, King David has a very large lead 67 percent of the votes are going his way so it looks like he will be advancing as well unless it changes now now we have moved to region two okay and as you see today is daniel and joseph and then tomorrow will be an incredible video as well as we see enoch from the book of genesis and moses so we have some exciting lessons here, and we're going to go ahead and begin with Joseph. Now, I would like to remind you folks that there are many Josephs in the Bible, many, many Josephs, but I'm going to tell you this is the one who is probably the most famous of all of them, okay? Um, and this is the Joseph from uh, from. Genesis, as you can remember, folks, uh, Abraham was the uh, man that God chose to make the nation of Israel from him and his children. Well, Joseph is his great-grandson, okay? And he is the one uh, that you probably remember received the coat of many colors from his dad. But anyway, let's go ahead and begin by looking at his position. Now, folks, there's really two answers to this question. If you know your Bible, he, his story, um, he was uh, sold into slavery by his brothers. Um, if you don't remember the story, you can go back and watch the round one video. But uh, he eventually got to Egypt and he was elevated to a high position. He basically was ruling the entire land of Egypt. And... Uh, and, uh, uh, but that's not what the answer that I, I would like to put. I would like to show you what position did he have really for God, for, you know, the work of the Lord. And uh, so I'm going to say that he is one of the founders of Israel. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and write that. Okay, founder of Israel okay he is one of many that I would give that title to okay uh, and I only say that because as I said folks you had Abraham then his son Isaac then his son Jacob God changed Jacob's name to Israel and then Israel had 12 sons they have become known as the 12 tribes of Israel, Joseph is one of those 12 sons. So he, you, you could say that he was one of the early pioneers of the country and its origins. So, and if you read the book of Genesis, folks, he is the hero at the end of the book, okay? So the second thing here is his personality. 
Now, I like the story of Joseph. He is, I'm going to just tell you folks, both of these men today are two of the most beloved characters in the entire Bible. They both have very, very heartwarming stories. And uh, when I look at the story of Joseph, something steps out to me, and that is, uh, and that is that he was confident. I'm going to write that down as his personality, and I'll explain it to you in just a moment. I see him in the, his story over and over showing confidence. He just seemed like a super confident person. Um, you know, it's unfortunate what happened to him early in his life. If you know his story, he was the, the most beloved son of his dad, Jacob, or Israel. And, but his brothers hated him, and, uh, and they sold him off into slavery. But God wound up raising him up in that foreign land of Egypt. And one day, uh, he, uh, he, he really became a great leader there. But think about his confidence. Do you remember Joseph once interpreted dreams? Do you know that was a very confident thing for him to do? To interpret these dreams to Pharaoh. Um, you could die if you told Pharaoh the wrong thing. He never budged, not a bit. Um, he was very, just so very confident over and over. You see it uh, even at the end of the story when his brothers came to Egypt because they needed food because of the famine. He was very confident in how he handled the whole situation. So there we go. Now, who does he compare to? Well, folks, I bet you know the answer if you look at your notes from yesterday. If you take notes, and I highly recommend that, um, yesterday we saw King David, and I compared him to Joseph. Now I'm going to compare Joseph back to King David. Okay? And I'll tell you why, just in case you don't remember. Uh, Joseph, just like King David, started very lowly, very in a low position. Uh, Joseph was one of the youngest sons of his dad, and uh, he was basically rejected by all of his other brothers, and that's kind of how King David was as well in his early days. He was overlooked. Um, and Joseph, as I've said, was raised up by God into a super high position. And so was King David, who started off very lowly as a shepherd, and he became king. So these two men, David and Joseph, compare wonderfully to each other. Now the last thing here um, is what is he most famous for? Well, folks... Please bear with me on this answer. What most people remember Joseph by is the coat of many colors. Okay? I'm not going to write that up here, though. Okay? But that's what most people, if I say the name Joseph, they say, oh, he got the coat of many colors. It was the gift from his dad. But that's not the answer I want to put. What made him famous in the Bible is my answer that I would like to say. And that is the story. In Egypt, remember, his brothers cast him off into slavery, but God raised him up in Egypt into the highest position next to Pharaoh. And at the end of the story, Joseph's family, the same ones that cast him away, had to come to him for help at the end of the story for food. Joseph was kind to them and invited them to come live with him in Egypt. So I'm going to say he's famous for saving his family. Okay? For saving his family. Okay? So folks, um, that is the story of, uh, of Joseph for today. 
Uh, please, there's, there's so much more. Uh, maybe go back and watch round one video if you want more information. He is so worthy of, of our votes, but so is the next man. Let's now turn our attention, please, to the prophet Daniel. Now, <clears throat> the same thing with Daniel, folks. I don't have time in this video today to tell you his story in its entire uh, form. You can go back and watch round one video if you would like. But I'm going to tell you the answers to these questions about him. Okay? First of all, what was his position? What did he do for God and for the work of God? Well, it's very uh, clear he was a prophet, okay? He was a prophet, okay? Now, what makes Daniel so, I think, so remembered? Um, if you notice, folks, he's ranked number seven in our tournament. I think he is the highest ranked of all the prophets. What makes him so remembered, I think, is not only was he a prophet, but it's when he was a prophet. He is a prophet in the Bible when Israel had lost their land and they were brought to the enemy country Babylon as slaves for 70 years. Daniel, during that important time, was a prophet, okay? So, I'll talk a little more about that in a moment. But let's look at his personality. Now, kind of similar to Joseph over here. Uh, he has a wonderful personality. When I think about Daniel, I think about when he was in Babylon, okay, the whole country was brought there. They made a rule in Babylon that if you were from Israel, you could not pray to your God, which is our God, okay, the one true God. They said you can't do that. And Joseph, decide, excuse me, uh, Daniel, Daniel decided, I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep praying to my God. I'm going to do it openly in front of everyone. That was a very courageous thing for him to do. And then I think about when he got through into the lion's den. When he got through into the lion's den, um, he, uh, he did not turn away and say, oh, no, 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 I'll take back all that I said. I, I won't do it anymore. No, he was very courageous in that moment and said, if that's what you want to do to me, do it, but I'm not going to give up on serving my God. So the answer, I think, is courageous. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. He was just a very courageous man, and we see it over and over in his story. Now, who does he compare closely to? Well, for his comparison, I turn to a man in the New Testament. If you remember our previous tournament that we did a, a month or so ago, this man made the championship video and he did not win. And his name was John the Apostle. And I'll tell you why in just a moment that I compare them to each other. Okay, the Apostle John. Why do I compare him to Daniel. Well, let me remind you folks that uh, the Apostle John wrote Revelation. The last book of the Bible talks a lot about the end of time. Let me remind you folks that the book of Daniel in the Old Testament has been called the book of Revelation of the Old Testament. They are very similar. They both deal with a lot of end time prophecies. Okay? But not just that. Daniel and the Apostle John both were young men, were young and worked their way up and became great leaders. They were both exiled 
are brought to a foreign place. Daniel was brought to Babylon, and if you know John's story, he was exiled to the island of Patmos. That's where he wrote the book of Revelation at. And another thing, Daniel was thrown into the lion's den and was miraculously saved by God. The apostle John in history famously was thrown into a, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it's a big large thing of burning oil. They were trying to kill him for his faith. And miraculously, John the Apostle was brought out of the oil and was untouched by it. So they have an amazing similar story, John the Apostle and Daniel. Okay. Now our last question today is, what is Daniel most famous for? Well, folks, there's two answers. Just like Joseph, I said to you, most people think of him by the coat of many colors. It was the gift he got. But he has really a more famous thing. With Daniel, most people think of the story of the lion's den, thrown into the lion's den, miraculously saved. But I say what I think he's most, most famous for is his end time prophecies. Okay, so I'm going to write that up here. End time prophecies. Okay, now what does that mean? Okay, this is the end of our video here. The last little thing I want to tell you end time prophecies well please understand daniel lived about six or seven hundred years before jesus came to the earth okay but daniel wrote a lot of prophecies about the end of time which folks we are in it today there's no doubt um, for example daniel wrote about the antichrist the man who will come at the very end and lead the world and then be defeated by Jesus Christ, okay? But he wrote so many wonderful things in his book about end-time Bible prophecy that I think that's what he's most famous for. So folks, I've done the best that I can today. I, I want to say one more time, both of these men are so deserving to go forward in the tournament. This is only round two. I would say, in my opinion, both of these men should have made at least round four. And it's just so unfortunate that they had met so soon in this tournament in round two. Which man inspires you a little bit more? Is it the very heartwarming story of Joseph and how he was cast off into Egypt and God raised him up and he wound up saving his whole family? from famine and from death? Or is it the story of Daniel and, and the courage that he showed when he was in exile in Babylon and how God used him as a prophet and to write some incredible things? So folks, I've done the best that I can today. I ask you to please think of it and pray about it and cast your vote today. And so thank you so much for tuning in to the video today. And we will see you on tomorrow. So please have a great day. God bless you.